Practitioners, as we all know, being an effective contact lens fitter requires more than just understanding materials and solutions. We've all been trained to respect these medical devices, and we all know that a thorough ocular health evaluation is equally as important. With experience, we quickly see that understanding the ocular surface is not only warranted for a good ocular health evaluation, but it has a direct relationship on patient comfort and acuity. One of those key issues that can affect our contact lens fits are factors related to dry eye. What tools do you use to monitor dry eye in your practice? Fortunately, we have quite a few options. Let's take a quick look at a few of the more popular tools in practice. It's great to see how each one of them has something a little bit different to tell us. Ocular Surface Disease Index. This is a series of 12 questions targeted at distinguishing normal patients from dry eye disease. The OSDI, as it's called, encourages the patient to rate themselves on questions like, have you experienced gritty or sore eyes over the last week? Have they been limited in visual tasks like watching TV or reading? The scores are then tabulated according to the instructions outlined on the form, matching the corresponding shade of red to the key will help determine whether your patient's score indicates normal, mild, moderate, or severe dry eye disease. Schirmer test. Using paper strips, the practitioner is able to see if the patient is producing enough tears. As indicated by the tear flow manufacturer, without manipulating the eye or inserting any topical drops, the patient is seated comfortably. Remove the strip from the pouch, then insert the notched end of the strip to the lower temporal lid margin. After five minutes, collect your findings. So how do you interpret the results of the Schirmer test? Normal is considered greater than or equal to 15 millimeters of wetting after five minutes. Mild is 14 to nine millimeters. Moderate is eight to four millimeters. Severe is considered less than four millimeters of wetting, again, after five minutes. Staining patterns, fluorescine, rose bengal, lysamine green. Corneal staining techniques are an excellent way for a practitioner to evaluate the superficial layers of the cornea. Let's talk briefly about three that are commonly used in practice. Fluorescein. This water-soluble dye molecule is definitely the most popular stain used in practice. When applied to the corneal surface, sodium fluorescein can expose disruptions in the epithelial cell layer, which is a key component to assessing issues related to dry eye. Rose Bengal. This is a sodium salt that stains mucins, healthy, dead, and devitalized cells. Although it has a strong history, this stain is not used as frequently due to side effects of stinging and noted toxicity to the ocular surface. Lysamine green. This is an organic dye that stains dead and degenerate cells, but does not stain healthy epithelial cells. Lysamine is best at revealing bulbar conjunctival staining. This stain has no reports of toxicity and shows very little issues associated with comfort. Tear meniscus height. The tear meniscus height, or tear prism, is yet another test that tells the overall tear volume of the eye. Before using any drops, a careful slit lamp evaluation should reveal an inferior tear meniscus, slightly larger than the superior section. A normal tear meniscus height is between 0.2 millimeters and 0.4 millimeters for all age groups. A value of less than one millimeter suggests a tear insufficiency. Tear breakup. To perform this test, the practitioner instills fluorescein. While in the slit lamp, we count the seconds it takes for dry spots to appear after a blink. Normal is greater than 10 seconds. Average, five to 10 seconds and low would be anything below five seconds. Tear Lab. The Tear Lab was designed with the understanding that in order to correctly treat dry eye, 
we need to understand the components of the tiers. The tier lab system does this by measuring the osmolarity of the tiers. It is accepted by many practitioners that elevated osmolarity can cause less regulation of the tear film. So what does this mean? Increased osmolarity equals more damage to the oculus surface and more inflammation. The test provides a numeric result that allows a practitioner to better assess the tear film by understanding patient tear osmolarity. This is truly a powerful list of tools that can assist us in determining the ideology of dry eye. Ideology, that's the key, isn't it? If we know where the dryness is coming from, we know how to treat it. For example, let's say the patient has a quick teapot, but they did a good job on the Shermer's test. What does this tell us about the ideology? Most likely evaporative. We may consider addressing things like blepharitis or MGD with things like lid hygiene, orals, or supplements. Okay, here's another. Let's say a patient has a poor OSDI and Shermer's, but a good tear lab. In this instance, there's not enough tears. We have to start thinking about things like punctal plugs and orostasis. When we start to dive in, we quickly find it's not just one test, but yet using multiple tests side by side is where we're going to get this information. So which one of the tools mentioned do you use in your practice? Did we miss any here? Let us know in the comment section below. Happy prescribing.